what, to what, what did he Theresa say? May, the president played down back here. the tarmac incident. We think it's important that the press have access we to... We think it's important that the press have uh, access to the powers that should be. Okay, Barry, I just wanted to make sure that's what you were saying. They finally got access. The press finally got access to one of the powers that shouldn't be. Now, it's gotten to the point when I see hashtags like hacking Hillary, I'm not sure if it's going to be another data dump of criminal intelligence or if she's dying again. Um, <coughs> around the time Trump became the nominee. And look, he very early on allied himself with Putin's policies. I mean, to pull out of NATO, for goodness sakes, right? And he furthermore has praised Putin. He seems to have this you know, bizarre attraction to dictators, including Putin. He won't tell us where he owes $650 million. There's a lot of rumors about that. <clears throat> and <coughs> he has you know, made it clear that um, he doesn't particularly care whether Putin and the intelligence services attack American institutions. So, get some water. Yep. <coughs> so, this will go on for another four minutes. <coughs> where she stands there and coughs. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I can't watch the whole thing. It's kind of sad. I mean... It, murderous scum fucks that they are I don't know that I want to watch 10 minutes of video of them hacking and coughing at least not right now MSNBC cuts away and this was after finally Hill Dog lets the press corps on the plane and she can't even talk to him for a couple of minutes I've got another four and a half minute video on stage in Ohio where she coughs through the entire thing I don't think it's a conspiracy theory to wonder about the health of someone who can barely pull off any public events. I appreciate everybody listening live in the chat. You are listening to your Morning Monarchy for Tuesday, September 6th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Since we were off yesterday for Labor Day, we're kind of cramming our geopolitics news, and we'll also get into some cyberspace war news a little bit later on your Morning Monarchy. I get great ideas and great analysis from the chat, and a huge thanks to everybody who listens to these shows live and takes part in the chat, mediamonarchy.com slash listen. Going back to an earlier note, Brock Turner is massive news, but massive institutional rape of thousands, not news at all. Don't worry about it. Kind of goes with that saying. You know, one... one one death's a tragedy, a million's a statistic. There it is. Is it bronchitis? Is it TB? I don't really know. But I know that we would analyze any 68-year-old crotchety power that shouldn't be when they can barely stand on the stage. We had talked about this before as we started to talk about hacking Hillary, choking Hillary, Hillary's health all these last few weeks as it's amped up these last few weeks. We talked about Bob Dole. We are equal opportunity analysts. When an old man falls off the stage, you kind of go, oh, crap. I don't know I want Grandpa to be prez. So that's one evil old lady. How about our second evil old lady? In the 10-year battle over the Equal Rights Amendment in the 1970s, there was no more formidable opponent than Phyllis Schlafly. Feminist leader Betty Friedan famously hissed at her during a debate, I'd like to burn you at the stake. That's that great liberal love right there. Chicago columnist Mike Royko dubbed her a national nag, and a political activist smashed a pie in her face unfortunately injuring her eye. Through it all, Schlafly, known as the first lady of anti-feminism, remained impeccably groomed and seemingly unflappable. You gotta keep your sense of humor, she told the Times in 1996. Schlafly, the political activist who galvanized grassroots conservatives to help defeat the ERA and effectively push the Republican Party to the right in ensuing decades, died 
last night in her home in St. Louis. She was 92 years old. A spokesman for the Eagle Forum, the political organization she formed in that city, said that she died in the presence of her family. Conservative icon Phyllis Schlafly dead at 92. I helped to invent the conservative movement uh, before uh, any of you were around in 1964. Conservative icon Phyllis Schlafly died on Monday after losing a battle with cancer. She was 92 years old. Mrs. Schlafly was the president of the Eagle Forum, a conservative group with a strong focus on social issues that she founded in 1972. When she got active back in the very early 1970s, the Equal Rights Amendment was a foregone conclusion. It was going to pass. It passed both houses of Congress, and it is, was racing through the states. Phyllis Schlafly raised up a network of volunteer women across the country, state by state by state, and those women, those volunteers, stopped the Equal Rights Amendment. Mrs. Schlafly staunchly opposed feminism. But despite her defense of women in traditional roles, she herself was an accomplished academic and a prolific writer. She was politically active until the end of her life, recently pledging her support for presidential nominee Donald Trump. Because we have the best conservative platform we've ever had, and he endorses it, he will stand by it, he is a real conservative, and I ask you to support him. In a statement, Mr. Trump said Mrs. Schlafly was a conservative icon who led millions to action, reshaped the conservative movement, and fearlessly battled globalism and the kingmakers on behalf of America's workers and families. She died among family at her home in St. Louis and is survived by six children, 16 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Now, Phyllis Schlafly occupies an interesting place in the realms and worlds that we discuss here in the media monarchy kingdom. I was warned about Phyllis Schlafly 25 years ago by Jello Biafra on one of his spoken word albums. Jello Biafra, of course, longtime fighter against censorship, to put it very simply. Dead Kennedys and Jello Biafra were the first man to actually ever go to trial for what was in their album. That's not what the Judas Priest trial was. The Judas Priest trial was about you. our kids killed ourselves because of you. Two Life Crew went on trial for obscenity. Dead Kennedys went on trial before those bands for the H.R. Giger penis landscape painting that they included in their Frankenchrist album. Jelly Bioffer laid out the entire court case, all the ins and outs, all the players, and he did this many times over and discussed all the things going on in the world in the 80s and 90s in punk rock albums, sometimes in music, sometimes in spoken word. Those spoken word albums were my political awakening in the late 80s and early 90s. So the funny thing is, post 9-11, when I suddenly go, oh, am I a conspiracy theorist? Yeah, well, it's in my background. I realize... Jello Biafra to Alex Jones was not that big a difference. They were exposing things I was not hearing anywhere else, and they were doing it independently. So being warned about Phyllis Schlafly 25 years ago from somebody like Jello Biafra, whose words and warnings have pretty much bared out almost all the time. Then the years go by, and my beloved alternative media seems to slowly turn more into the right, more into the Christian conservative, more into the John Birch Society. Then Alex Jones has Phyllis Schlafly on, and it's at that point I know I'm done here. Because I've done enough research to know that's not something I welcome in. So the same moment we're watching everybody that's supposedly in the alternative media go crazy for the Trump train... That's why we're not falling for it. We've done our research, we've done our homework, and just because some new thing pops up, we don't change our minds and we don't throw our beliefs out the door. That's how we roll. 